Hello and welcome to the Amateur Machine Shop YouTube channel. Over the last few weeks I made a few tangential lathe tool holders. It was now time to test them and see how well the tooling would perform. I want to find out how hard the tooling can be pushed before the lathe will cut out. Removing a lot of material on a mini lathe is time consuming. Here I'm lathing a piece of 2 inch diameter 1045 precision ground shaft. Shallow cuts of about 20 thou are about all that can be taken. It machines a little more difficult than cold roll steel. I will push the machining a little harder to find out what will happen. Oh, as you can see, the lathe cuts out and stops. I turn on the switch and it starts up again. Let's try that once more. This time the lathe didn't cut out, but rather blew a fuse. This issue is something I've been dealing with for a long while now. I'm always trying to be gentle, but often the cuts are too much and the lathe blows a fuse. It's hard to find these fuses locally, so I ordered 50 from Amazon to keep as spares. I cannot remember what the original fuse was, pretty sure it was a 5 amp 250 volt. Everything online that I can find suggests it may have been a 10 amp. Of course the manual doesn't list the fuse type. This piece of material might be a little large for this lathe. The small chuck and the build of the lathe makes it rather susceptible to vibration as you can hear. It's pretty maddening blowing fuses when you're trying to machine a part in a hurry. Of course for this video I'm purposely trying to blow fuses to show the solution. I finally had enough and decided to find a solution as to why the fuses kept blowing. On YouTube I entered mini lathe blow fuses and the very first video caught my attention. The video is by Tim Nummy, No More Blown Fuses. I watched his video and at the end ordered the circuit breaker. This is the circuit breaker that Tim suggests and I will add the link in the description to Amazon. I received the circuit breaker a few days after ordering it from Amazon and now I'm ready to swap out the fuse holder. The very first step is to ensure there's no power going to the lathe. The best way to do this is simply by unplugging it. This is the circuit breaker as it came in the box. Fairly slim design and has two quarter inch male terminals to connect to. There is a round plastic nut to secure it once a hole is drilled and the reset button is flush so there is nothing to bump into while using the lathe. Fortunately I have a box of connectors from another project. You will need two female connectors and a crimping tool to connect the wires from the fuse block to the circuit breaker. The main control box is held in place with four screws on this 7x14 model. Two screws at the top and two at the bottom. On my lathe the screws are Phillips head. I leave one screw on the top so that the box doesn't fall when the two bottom screws are removed. When you are removing the control box, watch for internal wires. You don't want to pull them out of anything and add repair time. Once you have the box flipped over, locate the fuse block, which shouldn't be hard to find. Find the two wires going to it. I did a dry fit of the circuit breaker to get an idea roughly where I could mount it without interfering with eternal electronics. Here's what I did to mount the circuit breaker. First I snipped the two wires from the fuse holder, then cut and stripped both of the wires for the quarter inch female connectors. Once the wires were ready, both connectors were crimped to the wires.
The threaded end on the circuit breaker is 3 8 inch diameter, so a 3 8 hole will be required in the control box to fit the breaker end through. There is a fair amount of room in the control box for the circuit breaker. I chose to mount it near where the fuse holder is. For drilling the hole, I use my cordless DeWalt drill with the 3 8 bit. Use a medium speed and drill very carefully. The cover is thin plastic and if you apply too much force, chances are the plastic will snap or crack. Feed gently, plastic drills easily. Watch out when the bit is close to breaking through. It will want to pull itself through the plastic. Again, I eyeballed the location. You have the option of being more precise and taking measurements. I had already fitted the circuit breaker with the connectors and the threaded round nut is removed. Feed the threaded end through the hole and thread the nut back in place. Using the steel and plastic nut, the distance that the circuit breaker sits proud can be adjusted to your liking. Now that I got the orientation of the control box correct, I fasten one screw and perform a test. I do not want to remove all the screws again if there is an issue. Great, it worked. Now I mount the control box with the remaining three screws. To see if the circuit breaker works, let's do a test on the same shaft that I've been lathing. What's happening now, the internal electronics are sensing an overload and tripping the motor, hence the yellow light. I'm guessing the lathe has a built-in device to sense overloading of the spindle. At least there are no more fuses to blow and the lathe is still protected via the circuit breaker. I'm going to trace the yellow light and see if the wires lead to the circuit board. If that is the case, I will not be able to do anything about it. I hope this fix works for others who are experiencing the same issue. Thank you for watching.